Well, good morning, everybody. It's me, Mitch. Late morning, it's almost noon. And I'm about to make myself a big meal and talk about a subject that I think is kind of cool, kind of cool in a primal, a primal kind of way. Before I start, I've got a really nice ribeye in the sous vide. We're going to sear it off. I'm going to make some eggs. Might just be the only meal of today. And every once in a while I do that OMAD stuff. So, But one of the reasons I think this is really cool is because I brought this knife out in a previous video and I got a lot of comments on it. And in my live stream last night, we talked quite a bit about, about knives because I was answering some of the questions about this one. And it brought to mind something I've been thinking about for years and years and years, and that is, why is it? And this is true for women, I guess because the comments I got last night were from some women who were just attracted to the concept of something like this, which, yes, is a tool, but there's a weapons aspect to it. And... Being an old knife collector and gun collector, even though I never intended to go into battle or kill anybody with these things, there is a certain primal urge or instinct or feeling that comes over you when you have any kind of a tool or weapon in your hand. And this is specifically true for men. And Tim Allen, who's a great comedian, his whole career was based on the concept of him grunting <clears throat> whenever he got a tool in his hand. And that's a real thing. It is a real thing. And it's amazing. And the quality and build of these tools gives pleasure to us. And why? And that's because in nature, anything, anything that was important to survival in any manner elicited a pleasure response because pleasure is, the, is nature's way of encouraging more of that particular activity. And unfortunately, it is the mechanism with which all addictions are built on. So this is important. And you see it. You see it in Sean Baker's videos when he eats his steaks, cutting with this big, beautiful Damascus handmade knife that he has. There is a certain amount of pleasure that almost makes you want to grunt because that is a primal remnant of a very important survival instinct. And it's the reason why we want to eat food that tastes good because that's our body signal that that food is what we need. So I tried it and that feeling washed over me again. The feeling of eating a steak on a piece of wood and using the tools that our ancient ancestors would have used to both butcher that meat and cut that meat also explains the pleasure we get from preparing food and cooking. Those are things that ensured our survival generations and generations ago. I talked about how sharp this knife was and how, like most weapons, when you use these things, you better be very careful because this thing is as sh I could shave with this knife. This knife is as sharp as a razor.
and it doesn't dull. It keeps its edge, and to resharpen it, you basically just have to use a stick. You don't want to grind on this. This thing is dangerous if you're not careful. And I don't recommend that most people use kitchen knives this sharp because you'd be going to the emergency room all the time. But there is that feeling that you get when, use it, when using a tool like that that uh, just does something to you. And to me, that's just another sign that living your life in a manner that satisfies the survival traits, traits of your ancestors, which were passed down to you, is the way we're supposed to live. Now, just being a carnivore and eating the right food, like a steak like this, satisfies, by itself satisfies that urge. And it's one of the reasons why it's the natural thing we should be eating. And it connotates a primal lifestyle. And a lot of people in the keto and carnivore spaces have talked about the primal life. I know Mark Sisson has a whole series of not only philosophies and books and lectures and videos, but also companies that offer foods labeled primal. So this primal thing is a, uh, is, is a good thing and beneficial because it gives us pleasure. And if that type of feeling hadn't been completely hijacked by our addiction to foreign substances, which we never should have been exposed to in the first place, then we, we should be um, striving to always go for that what I call primal feeling that what we're doing is the best thing we can do for our survival. And part of survival means being healthy, getting properly nourished. So what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to cook this steak. I usually cook it in butter, but we talked a lot about baking grease last night. So, so I'm going to use baking grease in this thing. And... I love that too. That also has a great flavor. Now I blotted off my steak here because when you sear meat, you, you basically don't want any water in the pan. Now the bacon grease has a higher melting point than butter, a smoke point rather. So we're going to let that get good and hot. We're going to put this thing out of the way for now. And I don't dr dump the water every time I use this thing. About once a week, I'll dump the water and clean it out because there's no part of that water which touches the food. And there's a lot of comments about sous vide things in plastic with all the forever chemicals, and that's why I use the, uh, the silicone, silicone bag. So we'll let this pan heat up. This little $20 gadget from Amazon is a handy little tool. Once this pan gets to about 400 degrees, right now it's a little over 400. I'll start searing my steak. On the edges. I'll turn on the exhaust fan, so pardon the noise. At the same time, I'll put my pan on the stove here. 
let it start heating up to cook my eggs. And this is going to be a ballet of juggling the steak and the eggs. And hopefully I'll be able to finish the eggs in time for the steak to be done and I can eat both of them, both of them hot. So I sear the edges off. And these steaks are thoroughly cooked to a medium rare. And while this steak is searing on the first side, I'm going to get my eggs, get them ready, and I'm going to throw a little butter in the pan. Perfect. You don't need it with this non-stick pan, but I like to have a little, a little butter on my eggs. We're going to have four eggs today. And we're going to get these going. So what I'm having today it might be all the food that I actually have for the whole day. And... That will be enough. I haven't eaten since about 3.30 yesterday afternoon. And true to form, I'm not starving. If I didn't eat today, it would be okay. Alrighty. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a look at this steak. Oh, that looks good. I'm going to beat my eggs. You never saw me move this fast. Little Redmond's real salt. Not much. Don't need much. And I know by now that you'll excuse me while I beat my eggs. Okay. That looks good. So this whole breakfast, after the steak was sous vide, which didn't take any, any actual energy on my part, it's basically a less than 10 minute ordeal of cooking. And that is seared. So I will take that and put it on the cutting board and let it rest while the egg finishes. And then we'll go about cutting it open and taking a look at it and seeing how it came out. Normally you want to let a steak rest for a good five minutes, but because the inside of the steak was never really heated up very much over the 130 degrees that I sous vide it, it's not necessary to let it rest this long. So we'll let this egg firm up because you all know that, if you don't know by now, that I like my eggs kind of well done. And we'll go ahead and we will slice into this steak and see exactly what it looks like. And I'm 
Look at that. God, is that beautiful and tender? And I'm going to start eating my steaks right off of a cutting board because that is a gives me a primal feeling as well as using this knife. So there you go. That is a beautiful, juicy looking piece of steak. Sous vide and seared in bacon grease. Our egg is firming up. I can't wait. I'm going to go ahead and try just a little bite of this while I'm finishing the egg. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, wow. That first bite of steak, after you have it eaten for 20 hours, is probably the best, the best tasting thing that a human being can imagine. I wouldn't trade a gallon of ice cream, candy, pastries, bagels, pasta. I wouldn't trade anything in the world for the satisfaction I'm getting from the taste of this steak. Mm. And that is why carnivore is a sustainable diet. Because at no time after you adapt to this, do you feel anything but privileged to be able to eat only this kind of food. There's no cravings. There's no feeling sorry for yourself. All you really have, believe it or not, is pity for the people that you see eating all that stuff, knowing what it's doing to them. You want to help them, but they, uh, they're they not interested. That's sad, but it's true. So, what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to take this cutting board and put it over here. I'm going to take my egg and move around to here. And we're going to put this camera over there so we don't miss any of this goodness. And I'm going to say to you guys, bone appetit. I know you don't want to watch me eat this whole thing because that might be, might be painful for you. Mm. Even that. Is so delicious. And I'm going to savor and enjoy every bite of this primal food, tools, and the freedom to be as healthy as I can be. So the rest of you, take the rest of the day off and, and eat meat and get a big knife. <laughs> mm.